This video is part of a docu-series detailing stories of viral videos and clips from the internet. I'm breaking them down to provide some context for what you may or may not come across with internet access. Please keep in mind, this is an educational series informing the public on real news events. These stories are intended for mature audiences, and viewer discretion is advised. Welcome. The first story today took place in North Houston of Texas on February 13th of 2024, and details an unidentified man that used his Second Amendment right to defend himself while sleeping inside his truck. A man was sleeping inside his truck at an apartment complex at the 300 block of Parramatta Lane because he got into an argument with his girlfriend earlier that night. Around 3 a.m., the man sleeping inside his truck was awoken by someone attempting to break in when he grabbed his AR-15 that he kept next to him inside the truck and fatally shot the suspect. The man ran into his brother's apartment to call 911. Before 911 arrived, the man filmed a video on his iPhone showing an American flag draped over the suspect, and he continues to say, Why don't you look at the license plate, bro? It appears the truck had dark window tint, and the suspect was unaware of what, or I should say who, was inside. The man tried to rob a U.S. veteran sleeping inside his truck in Houston, Texas, and the result speaks for itself. That's as much of the footage I can show on YouTube, but the full video is posted in the 762's telegram. When police arrived, they searched the area and found the now-deceased thief was in his 20s and had broken into three other vehicles in the area and was also armed with a Glock handgun and a large screwdriver. The veteran cooperated with police and his case is being investigated to determine whether any charges will be filed and will possibly get referred to a grand jury. The next story for today's video sounds like a movie plot, but is indeed very real. In 2015, HBO made a documentary series called The Jinx about a New York real estate mogul named Robert Durst. Durst was a suspect in multiple crimes dating back to 1982, when Robert Durst's first wife, Kathleen McCormick, went missing. Later in 2000, Susan Berman was found murdered in her L.A. home and in 2001, Durst's neighbor, Morris Black's body parts were discovered in a bay. Durst was a suspect in all three crimes, but there was no solid evidence to tie Durst to any of the cases to get a conviction. But these allegations would surround Robert Durst, and he would become infamous for the crimes people believed he committed. The case is never getting solved, and the infamous attention surrounding Robert Durst is what inspired HBO to make a docu-series about the events. The series incorporates a wide array of existing media, including news footage, security footage, police evidence, and interviews with family members of the victims surrounding the unsolved cases that were all tied to Robert. For the series, HBO was able to get Robert Durst himself to appear for an interview to get his side of the story. In episode 5, an envelope was brought in that Durst had sent to one of the victims, Suzanne Bierman. The envelope had the same writing that was found on a note sent to police on the day Berman was found dead. Police had always suspected the note had come from the killer. In the final episode of the series, the filmmakers visit a forensic document examiner who stated that the note that was sent to Bierman from Durst a year before her death and the note that was sent to police could only have come from one person and one person only. When HBO confronted Durst about the handwriting, he denied writing the second letter. But when the interview ended shortly after, Durst went to use the restroom and did not realize his mic was still recording, where he would continue to ramble to himself and would eventually say, What did I do? I killed them, of course. Corn.
On March 14th in 2015, the night of the final episode's airing, Durst was arrested by the FBI on first-degree murder charge after his apparent confession. Durst's confession was picked apart by defense attorneys and would not stick in court, but what would stick was the handwriting from the two letters. I do want to note, the prosecutor asked Durst if he would admit to killing Berman, in which he just flat-out replied no. But what makes it really interesting is he continued to say, I did not kill Susan Berman, but if I had, I would lie about it. He maintained he had nothing to do with Berman's death. However, in September of 2021, he was convicted for first-degree murder and the next month sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Durst was later officially charged with McCormick's death as well. However, he died in prison on January 10th of 2022 before the second trial could even begin. Thank you all for watching. I would like to know how you feel about this video style. I'm trying to decide how long the video should be or how many stories should be in each video. I'm also considering only covering current events and not older stories. If you made it this far, please message me or comment below if you have any input.